and let's get started. Sorry for the late start, everybody. We had a bit of a technical hiccup, but I think we're good to go now. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the Bidjigal and Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, who traditionally occupied this area of the sea coast on which we are hosting this meeting. We'd also like to pay our respects to the elders, both past, present and emerging, and extend our respect to the Aboriginal people here tonight. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australia. I'd like to invite you to, to just let us know where you're coming from today, and um, if possible, use the other you know at home. I think there's a message that your voice was a little bit um, crackly, Dan. So, yeah, I reckon it might be something to do with the rain and the funny weather we're having. Is that any better? It's better for me. Yeah, we just had a massive thunderstorm here in Randwick, <laughs> so we've um, the Wi-Fi might be affected. Yeah, right. I might just say it again. I just um, yeah, invite you to use the chat function to tell us where you're coming, where you're joining us from today, if you can. Oh, can't be mm. How about you, Justine and Julian? Can you hear very well? I can hear you okay. And I think some people are um, can hear because they're posting uh, the country <laughs> they're joining. All right, well, I might just proceed and see how we go. Um, I'd like to first start by introducing myself. I am Danielle Norby, and I'm a founding member of the Randwick. Okay, Dan, are you able to pull people out of the breakout room then? I did it. Oh, okay. So welcome back to the main session. Hope you had a great chat. It would be great if you could just share in the chat some of the motivations and some of the um, things you learnt about each other and I did talk to a couple of rooms where you had some sound issues so um, hopefully that's a good way of sharing what what you talked about also um, we hope we've sorted Dan's sound and that she'll be um, loud and clear in a minute i um, sorry about the sound issues so we'll just keep going um, so yeah we thought it was really important just to highlight why we're part of this group and what it means to us um, why we contribute to this group um, and what the purpose is really so the um, models which we briefly touched on before we went into the breakout rooms are the all the different ways of getting sustainable food and we see this as very much a sort of patchwork with different groups doing different things so um, there are lots of food cooperatives that you might know of. If you live in Sydney, you might know of Alfalfa House. It's a very famous food cooperative that's been going for a long time. Um, it tends to be open most days. It's like a shop where you can turn up and um, buy organic and sustainable food and tends to avoid packaging, it tends to be run by volunteers with one or two paid people. Um, I'll just skip the bio group because we'll come back to that and contrast a bit to that. There's also the food box deliveries, which might be a full time paid role for somebody. Somebody might be actually um, uh, organising that as a commercial business. They might have a relationship with a farmer where they're bringing the food to um, the consumers and making sure that the food um, you know, is ethical all the way along but um, you might be paying a, a higher um, price for that food because you're actually paying for somebody's wages to deliver it to you. We also see community gardens as really important in this because they're local and sustainable and uh, people can be involved in them in lots of different ways in their communities. And um, another kind of practice, a food practice that's really interesting is um, scrumping which is a i'll just post in the chat there's a little map um, that you can have a look at and it's a way of sharing food that you might uh, gather on the from public places so scrumping is sort of um, 
using things that you've got in your neighbourhood and uh, reusing things that might be thrown away or might fall onto the ground. So the scrumping map is about um, adding where you know that local rosemary bush or that local mulberry tree is in your community and so that other people when there's excess fruit or it's in season can go and share and, um, and you can upload your own ideas for doing that as well. We also see um, dumpster diving as important. We might think of dumpster diving as something that's you know a very marginal thing that not a lot of people do. But if you think about the influence that a lot of these um, different models have, have, have things like Oz Harvest now have actually taken that model of using food that would be normally thrown away and normally um, discarded and actually making sure it's used by providing it to people that actually use, use it and need it. Um, the buyers group sits alongside all of those because it has very much the same values and principles, but it's just the way that we do it is a little bit different. So we don't have any um, paid staff. It's all run by volunteers. And the idea is that everybody shares the roles in the group to keep the cost down. And Dan's going to talk a bit more about um, how that does actually keep the cost down and, and what the costs actually end up being. Um, but we see them all, all very important and all very complementary and you can be involved in many of them at once. You don't have to just do one, you can do several things. But we thought that when we're thinking about why we're doing it um, is to have this um, set of options that we can have to make sure that food is affordable and more affordable than it could be other ways. Um, sometimes we think of organic food as more expensive, but the way that we've organised and the way that the buyers group works, you're going to see is actually keeps it quite the cost down. Um, it makes sure that things are local and seasonal. So we, t we always order in a way that emphasises the seasonal um, produce and try and cut down on the food miles. So try and order things that um, we know come from our local area. Um, we know that because it's organic, it's um, got less chemicals and the reason, part of the big motivation for me is the bigger environmental picture. So the fact that the pesticides aren't being used and the waterways are clean and the land is actually going to be usable for a much longer time. Um, all of that flows in and flows from not using chemicals. Reducing food waste. So um, we get a box and um, you use what you get and um, you don't sort of go to the supermarket three times a week and end up with all these things that you don't know um, if you're going to use them or not you just sort of have know how much you're going to get in the week and how much you can use um, also helps reduce packaging we order as much as we can in bulk so we don't get individual packets um, as much as possible. We recycle all the boxes that we get. They go back to the supplier, they go back to the markets and they get reused each um, week in and out. So no, very little packaging. Um, we also think it's really important that people know where their food comes from and know um, the people that grow the food. So all of the suppliers that we work with, um, we know who they are, the um, they, they're accredited, so they, know, they have, go through a process to be accredited as organic. Um, we really know the, the, where the food comes from and who, who grows it. Really important to us is um, community, so sharing this um, food every week, um, getting the bulk delivery and actually putting it into the boxes is part of the joy of being in the group and getting to know people over time and Dan's going to explain, but we've been going through lockdown and um, we've all found that, you know, lockdown has been a very disruptive time and to have those sort of weekly relationships and just check-ins on people and seeing how they're going is really what we value at the moment. So just a, another reminder um, of this importance of the um, of the organic and sustainable food is that actually um, sustainable food and organic food and reducing food waste is one of the most important, um, oh, there we go, I'll put it in the chat as well, um, one of the most important impacts we can make on climate change. So if you scroll down through this table, and I'll leave it to you, have a look at it from the chat, um, if you have a look at the solutions there, the um, 
top, we got sort this, this is scenarios for climate change and the top impact we could have if we sort it um, by scenario one is actually, oops, that way, reduce food waste. It's the number one impact that you can have on climate change. And by us participating in um, local groups like these, we're having a bigger, an impact on the bigger system. We're actually changing the system little one step at a time, one small action at a time. So that's really important to us too. So are you ready to take back over, Dan, do you think? Yes, um, I might I suggest that if you control the slides, uh, because I've come back to you from a different device. So, Justine, if I tell you when to turn the slide, maybe that, that might work given the circumstances. Hopefully everybody can hear me a little bit better on my laptop versus our um, PC. Okay, so I'm going to present to you on the Randwick Organic Buyers Group, how it started and how it works. Um, as I was saying at the start, but people probably didn't hear me, our group is actually oversubscribed at the moment. So we've closed to new members, uh, but tonight we want to tell you, share with you uh, a new exciting initiative that we have planned. So next slide, please, Justine. So the Randwick Organic Buyers Group was established in 2006, and it was after some local residents, including myself, attended a workshop at the Randwick Eco Living Festival. For me personally, I'd been living overseas and buying my fresh produce from the local markets, often from the people who grew it. And I couldn't face coming back to Randwick and having to buy my, my fruit and veg from an overpriced greengrocer or a lo local supermarket where the vegetables were perfect, often not that fresh, not tasty and often packaged. I'd been involved in a food cooperative at the University of New South Wales called Thoughtful Foods. Uh, you might know it. Uh, so I knew that there were some good alternative models to mass production and distribution of food via a supermarket. So the first meeting was in my lounge room in my flat in Coogee. And two months later, we placed our order uh, for 16 households with Back to Eden, which is the organic supplier that we still use today. So we divvied in somebody's backyard in Pine Street, Randwick, uh, before we moved to the after school care building at the Randwick Public School. When the school was undergoing renovations, we moved to the Randwick Literary Institute, and then we moved on to Barrett House near Bunnings. Um, Barrett House is a house that was bequeathed to the Randwick Council and retrofitted with um, sustainable living technology. So although Barrett House is closed at the moment due to the lockdown, we are still operating out of my garage, actually. It was supposed to be for two weeks um, and it's turned into three months. Um, but we've been able to do that adhering to the public health orders. So nobody comes onto my property. We push all the boxes out into the lane. My family is doing the sorting. Uh, people have to wear masks and they must sign in with a QR code. Um, so it's pretty exciting that we can still continue in some form uh, during lockdown. Uh, but I should say we're immensely grateful to the Randwick Council for supporting this group from, from its inception through to providing spaces for us to hold our weekly divvy. And we really look forward to returning to Barrett House soon. So everybody wants to know what's in a box. So our boxes cost $40 and it's usually enough for a family of four a week. Uh, each week we have a selection of fruit and vegetables, um, which changes depending on the season and what's good value. But generally we try and include leafy greens, uh, root vegetables such as potatoes and carrots, and usually two or three types of fruit that are in season. Um, and we also have a good variety of fruit and vegetables. We aim for the full rainbow of colours. Um, so that you're getting a healthy diet with all the, the vitamins and nutrients that uh, all the colours um, offer. Um, we also have an item that was intrigue. And this is a delight for me. Do you want to move to the next slide? Thanks, Justine. So you might see something that looks like a grenade in this photograph. So it's actually a jelly melon, also known as an African torn cucumber. So you peel it and eat it like a cucumber. 
side. And spaghetti squash, which is such an awesome vegetable. You chop it in half, stick it in the microwave for a few minutes, and then you use a fork to release all the spaghetti strands. Um, serve it with a bit of butter and salt and pepper, it's delicious. And this one is just the most exquisite vegetable that I've been introduced to through the Organic Buyers Group. So it's called a Romanesco cauliflower. And it is so beautiful that I find it hard to eat. We have it sitting on the bench for days, admiring it, talking about Fibonacci numbers with the children um, before we consume it. Uh, you might see in this photograph that the, potato, the um, carrots are a little bit broken. So sometimes we buy seconds. Um, they're much cheaper. They still taste the same. Um, sometimes we might get juicing apples or juicing oranges. And this is a way to reduce food waste, as Justine was talking about. Um, some of you might remember War on Waste, where any bananas that are too bent or too big or too small are chipped and composted. Um, so you know, we're, we're trying to reduce food waste by buying the second from time to time. And you know, we're okay with bananas that are a little bit bent. That's cool by us. So I love that somebody else chooses what's in my box. So I never volunteer to um, make an order because I like somebody else making that decision for me. I find that ordering a box through the Organic Buyers Group changes the way that you cook. So the ingredients arrive and then you create the menu rather than the other way around where you decide what you want to make and then you go to the supermarket or the greengrocer. It inspires our household cooking, as you can see in this uh, photograph here. Uh, my daughter made an enchanted broccoli forest. Uh, this recipe is from the Moosewood, which is one of my favourite cookbooks when I used to use cookbooks. Um, but I must say now that I often ask fellow buyers group members for cooking ideas or I go to Google for recipe ideas now. So having a box like this makes me experiment with ingredients I wouldn't usually buy. So for example, kale, if that's in the box, one of the members of the group, you want a second Justine? Yep. Um, oh, I'll just go back to the broccoli slide, that's it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, kale chips, awesome. So you just uh, bake the kale in the oven. Um, I never thought that my 10 and 12 year old would actually fight over a last piece of kale, but they do when we make kale chips. Uh, if uh, beetroot's in the box, I might grate it with apple and then put a squeeze of lemon onto it, and the kids love that. Um, and sometimes we get fennel in the box. And one of the members introduced me to fennel from pesto, which is the most delicious, vibrant green uh, pesto you'll ever see. And it freezes well, <laughs> it's a great dish. So this kind of cooking is always, it's healthy because you always have something in the fridge and so you're not reaching for something processed. Okay, can we go on to the next slide. Now, I don't know how many of you were able to go to the shops and just have a look at how much organic food costs. But if you did get out there, you would have found that it's actually very expensive to buy organic food. Um, I thought I probably should do the same exercise that I've asked everybody else to do. And I was actually quite surprised what I found. So this photo here is the box that we had on Monday this week, and it cost our members $40. But if you were to buy the same box of fruit and vegetables, not organic, from our local leading green grocer, if you're local, you'd know the one in Rand Royal Randwick, um, it would actually cost more, it would cost 50, no, more than $10 uh, to buy non-organic from there. If you bought organic, then it would be double the price of our boxes. So that is pretty cool. Our boxes are cheaper than buying non-organic from the shops. Unfortunately, I don't have any photographs of our group operating from Parrot House um, because we're not operating from there at the moment. So these are some of the photos from our previous then um, um, previous room that we used to, to divvy from. Um, but you can kind of see how, how it works there. So members place a box um, order um, and boxes are $40, as I've said. 
and you can opt in or out from week to week. We currently have more than 60 members, um, which is the most we've ever had and the reason why we've needed to close to new members for the rest of the year. So we're ordering about 24 boxes a week at the moment. And this is kind of our limit because it gets a bit chaotic um, if you have too many people. Um, so each Sunday, one of our members places an order with the organic supplier. And then each Monday, the produce is delivered to Barrett House. And at 5.30 on the Monday, uh, those who have ordered a box come to help divvy the produce amongst um, the number who have placed an order. And if people come early, then they can leave early. So people might spend 20 or 30 minutes divvying, um, which I reckon is actually around the same amount of time that you might spend going to the supermarket or the greengrocer and choosing what you want and then lining up at the checkout. So it doesn't take you that much, well, it doesn't really take you more time to be part of this group. Everybody's usually invited, um, although in a pandemic situation, sometimes we do need to limit the number and so we manage a bit of a, a roster, which is more work, but at least we can still keep ordering through the group. Um, we love having kids along, as you can see from that photograph. Um, and yeah, it's lovely for everybody to get together. So our entire group is run by volunteers and that's how we keep the value of the boxes so low um, and affordable. And I should emphasize here too that it's, a, it's not a service or a business. Like the idea is that everybody pitches in to help and to make it work. And if you don't have time to do that, then perhaps this group is for you and you're best to pay a bit more and get a delivery service to your door. Um, so we understand that everybody uh, can't contribute the same amount of time all the time, but we do expect that at some point um, everybody would make a positive contribution to keeping the group going. So we're very casual about things, like it, it, um, it just all seems to work out in the end. Okay, so different members take it in turns to take on different roles. And some of the roles are shared by up to four people. So there's always somebody to help out if they go to plan. Uh, and some people keep their roles for years because they love them so much. So for example, we currently have four people who take it in terms to order. And each of those orderers has actually been ordering for at least a year. And one of them, Kathy, has been ordering on and off for the last 10 years. So our, our members love to stick around and love to help. And I actually think that that's the key to the success of our group, that so many people feel ownership of the group because they contribute to the running of it. And so people are less likely to experience burnout because many of us are helping. And if you feel tired and not wanting to do that role anymore, um, really would a replacement not actually step up to help. So we see each other face to face every week or two, even in the pandemic, but behind a mask. Um, and I think that's what keeps the group going too. Like we swap recipes, friendships form, we watch our children grow, and community is built at the same time. Um, so, and you can't, I was going to say, you can't really say the same thing about when you go to the supermarket and it's such an anonymous experience. So another thing that makes our group so successful is that e-commerce just makes it really easy to manage. Um, and it, we try and keep it simple. So it's just a simple model and we've tweaked it slightly over the last 15 years, but it just works. I reckon some groups fall over because they try and complicate things by catering to individual needs, um, which creates a lot of extra work for the volunteers to manage. Um, but having said this, if the energy and will is there, some of our members do like to order extra items and, and that's awesome. So I should say that I, even though I'm a founding member, I'm not the success of this group. So you know, I've stepped away from it for several years when my children were young. Um, I spent two and a half years living overseas and then another year more recently living in Bhutan. And the group continues to go from strength to strength, which is an absolute joy for me. So all this got us thinking that if this model is so successful, and we're at capacity with the Brandon Organic Buyers Group. 
or then we need more groups. And why don't more groups set themselves up? Well, it's a bit of work and a bit daunting if you've never done something like that before. Um, for example, a new group, you, know, you need to set up a bank account and an ABM and you know, build a website and get insurance. Um, and there's a lot of work to do before you see your first lovely box. Let's next slide to see. Thank you. <laughs> So today we're launching the Organic Buyers Group Hub to make it easier to start a new buyers group. And we're hoping that tonight we can identify some groups of interested people who live in the same area who we can bring together to establish some new groups. So by starting a group um, together with the Organic Buyers Group Hub, we can support you in a number of different ways. For example, we've developed an establishment guide, so step by step what you need to do to start a new group, um, and also an operations manual which explains how to actually run a group so you don't need to reinvent the wheel and try and create something new. We've got this tried and proven model that works well, although you can tweak it how, how you want it as well. We can al also offer personal support, so me and a number of uh, the Randwick Organic Wires Group members are passionate about this and really willing and able to help other groups uh, to get off the ground. Um, we've also got an established website and an e-commerce uh, template that groups can use uh, to set up their, their little groups. And we have a discount on public liability and volunteer insurance too, so it makes it really easy. Um, and you know, we'll be promoting uh, the organic group hub idea and trying to to get more and more people interested and so you'll have access to, to our networks and and we can help help you uh, find other like-minded people who might want to do that too um, we also have templates for risk assessments and COVID safety plans that we we need at the moment and so we can share all those so you're not having to to put in the hard work to get all that done So if you'd like to be part of an organic buyers group in your area, we'd be delighted to help you. Um, you can go to our website, which you can see on the screen there. Justine will put the address in the chat. It's www.organicbuyers.group. And you can invite your family and friends too, and, and we're gonna start helping to set up more groups. So next slide. One back, please, Justine. Yeah, so the first group, um, or the next group to get started, will be the South Coogee Organic Fire Group. Um, we have a core group of local residents who've been working hard over the last couple of months to get that group together. Uh, they're expecting their first Debbie in November, and that will be at the Randwick Community Centre at Munda Street in Randwick. And again, we're very appreciative to the Randwick Council for supporting this initiative. They need new members, but they'd love to hear from you. Uh, boxes will be $40 and annual membership is also $40. Um, so if you're interested in joining this group or trialling a box from this group, you can register your interest again on the Organic Buyers Group Hub at www.organicbuyers.group and we'll let you know when you can order your first box. So we're currently talking with residents uh, in Bondi, Roselle and Forestville as well. So hopefully we'll have some new groups um, set up in the next few months. And I should say that ideally your organic buyers group is walking distance from your home. Um, so you can you know, walk a right to collect your, your produce and you're not having to get in a car and um, use fuel. So, to summarise, um, our take home messages, I guess, are register your interest in helping to start a new group or joining a new group, um, or trial a box from the South Coogee Organic Buyers Group, um, which will be starting in November. So go to that website and register your interest and then we'll be in touch. 
Um, and yeah, we, we are really excited about this space and, and what's coming next. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, these are just some little people that my uh, children and I uh, made from the contents of the Rambic Organic Box. Um, during lockdown, we made a stop motion film. Some of you may have seen the film, um, which um, we, we put in the engagement activity before today. Um, so we, we have a bit of time for, for questions. Um, and just questions through the chat, um, please. So if you post them, I'll read them out and we can discuss them uh, together. Dan, as you know, is a incredible resource and you've got a chance here to ask us some questions, particularly about the hub. I can see that there's people um, asking one of the questions that came up was about do we buy directly from farmers? So Dan, do you want to explain a little bit about the process of ordering from the markets? Sure. So, I mean, ideally we would be buying direct from the farmers and from time to time we do, like if somebody has some surplus produce, um, then they can sell it to the group and we can um, make that part of our boxes. Uh, but generally to keep things you know, just really simple, we just go straight to the one supplier, back to Eden, and they operate out of Flemington Market and just deliver straight to, to Barrett House. So it's it's just really easy for community groups to to access by having the one organic supplier. But yeah, definitely open to buying direct from farmers as well. And I think there was also a question about um, what about households and um, just looking at the boxes, how many people does it feed for how long? That kind of question. Mm -hmm. Yep, it depends how many vegetables you eat in your household, uh, but it can definitely feed a family of four for a week. Um, during lockdown, my family of four have been ordering a box most weeks. Occasionally we just have too many vegetables and we can't get through them all, but that's cooking every day. Um, so, so couples will order, order a box and usually it's a you know, it takes more than a week for them to get through a box. Um, some some weeks there'll be like huge quantities, other weeks maybe less quantity, depending on what we order. Like if we order something special, like you know, 500 gram punnets of, of organic strawberries, then they might be a bit less in the box, but not necessarily if that's offset with say, um, you know, juicing carrots and, and other other ingredients. So yeah, kind of, you know, I would say you can feed a family of four um, in a week with a box. So um, somebody asked about sharing the slides, which we can definitely do. And I, I think we'll share the recording as well. Um, but there's a couple Part of- Part of a- um... Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know what that was. Um, if uh, there's a couple of questions like, what's the ratio of fruits to vegetables in the box? Mm -hmm. So we, we usually have at least two or three types of fruits in the box. Generally our members, so I mean, that's the beauty of being part of an organic buyers group. You can influence what kind of ratio we have in the box. You know, if you don't, don't like it and other people don't like it. So I know um, this year, you know, some people have said, some boxes have had too much fruit, so we've kind of said toned it down. So instead of having you know, seven types of fruit, there'll be less. But I would say if you had to estimate, I reckon maybe there would be a quarter is fruit and the rest is vegetables. Um, so I'll just footnote that by saying that um, fruit is more expensive than vegetables. So the, the actual cost on the invoice might be closer to half fruit, half vegetables, but because of the price of vegetables are just more expensive and more seasonal. Um, they might come from further away. We might, the ratio might be smaller, but the cost might be slightly higher. So that's why we, we tend not to have um, too much fruit. And there's another question. Do you find you still need to shop at ordinary veg vegetable markets or do you find yourself just using what's in the box? For me personally, I mean, everybody would have a different experience, but I often do supplement with other uh, fruits and vegetables, especially 
when my children were young, it was quite limited to what you know, they would, um, what fruits and vegetables they would eat. So I'd have to supplement with uh, other things from the box. Um, sorry, from the supermarket. Um, but yeah, it did. Yeah, I yeah I do sometimes. Um, other times it's enough to get us through the week. And there's another question about our members willing to swap various contents. Yes, definitely. So we um, we haven't been able to do it so much because of um, social distancing and not all turning up at the same time. But usually when we all divide together, we have a swap box. So you can leave something and take something. Or if we have, you know, 24 people ordered and we've been given 26 lettuces, we leave those there so people can sort of mix and match um, from what they they want to take. Um, yeah, so definitely nothing goes to waste and people don't have to have the things that um, maybe they're allergic or they don't, don't eat that thing. Um, and there's another great question, why not order dried goods as well? Uh, <laughs> I guess you're getting into a whole new space there. Um, we just, you know, this is our bread and butter, the fresh fruit and fresh vegetables, and it works really well. Um, and, you know, you can start doing that, but then it, it just complicates it more and more. And if members have the energy to do that, then that's awesome. Like, you know, sometimes Justine will order um, organic maple syrup, which is the most beautiful maple syrup at a ridiculous, um, ridiculously low cost and yeah we'll just organize that between ourselves so there's no reason why you can't do that it's just extra work so if people are willing to put in the extra work to order extra items then sure yeah so there um we don't we can't keep anything on the site um we have very limited storage space and we can really only just store enough um like the scales and the baskets that we use each week um, so we don't really have space to store stuff but it's if somebody wants to um, yeah order a big bunch of flour or oats or something that's not perishable and bring it in and share it um, that's fine and um, we can definitely share and through the hub we can share we know lots of local um, resources where you can work with somebody who actually does that um, sort of as a business you know sort of semi-informal way or where there are groups of people who all want to share and um, do something so we can put you in contact but really we we try and keep it very simple and that's as Dan says that's the secret to the success um, another question because we're going to run out of time but can you order every two weeks yep of course you can you can order yep whenever whenever you want really so yeah you can order every week if you want or you can order every month or yep every two weeks that's fine yeah, so the way the um, our group work and the structure that is being set up through the hub is you pay the membership fee and that's shared amongst the group to cover your insurance and any overheads that you've got. We just have very low overheads like things which we might need to package things in um, and maybe uh, yeah, the web hosting, things like that. Um, but then once you've paid your membership fee, you can order as much or as little as you want. And I think um, we're going to run out of time. So if there are more questions, um, would be great to, oh, thank you, um, Belinda, for sharing that. Um, would be great to hear from you through the hub, really. That's the way, isn't it, to contact us? Yeah, yep. yeah. Do you want to move on to the next slide, Justine? Yep. Oh, and the next one. No, oh, actually, that, that's the website. So, sorry, go back. Um, so... Yeah, if you if you are interested in helping to start an organic buyers group or finding a group near you, or you want to order through the uh, South Coogee Buyers Group, then go to the website there. Um, that's our hub website, and um, you could follow a link to a form and register your interest, and then we'll be in touch with you to um, uh, when we're ready ready to go. And this is the final slide. That one. <laughs> this is the final. Final slide. So um, yeah, I guess we'd just like to once again thank the the Randwick Council for putting on this um, festival and allowing us to um, share this information with you tonight. Um, they've also got some awesome programs like 
Logo, uh, Perma Bees Bush Care Plant With Us and um, Sustainability Bee Bakes as well. Um, so go to their website if you're interested in that. And finally, on the next slide, um, they would also like to hear back from you um, with a short survey. So um, you should, um, after this presentation in your inbox, you will receive an email from us. It's also got the Organic Wise Group Hub address on it, um, but the, the Eco Living uh, festival organisers would be really pleased if you could fill out the survey as well. So thank you everybody for your time. Um, apologies again for the technical hiccup. I don't know what happened, but during our rehearsal, everything was fine, but I don't know if it was the weather and the rain, but yeah, um, some kind of problem with my internet access. So yeah, I hope you've, you've enjoyed tonight and thank you again for your time and um, um, listening in, we, we hope to hear from you and we'll be in touch. Thanks very much, everybody, and love to hear about your groups as they progress. And we'll thank you both. It was a great presentation. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Good luck with the Matraville Marupa group. And I think there's uh -huh. other, lots of other places popping up in the chat too. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it's a great initiative. Cheers. Thank you. Okay.